the idea of biotechnology um, has overlaps with other scientific pursuits, but, but has a very specific difference in that biotechnology is the control or manipulation of living things. And our feelings that, uh, that, that we have or that some people have about um, living things and whether or not we should be disturbing them um, causes a lot of reaction against various kinds of biotechnology. And it's the kind of reaction that you get that you don't have in the field of electronics or any of the other sciences. So it comes down to the fact that biotechnologists um, as a whole, I would say, um, uh, have, a, have a technology or, or groups of technologies that take advantage of living things, that control the output of living things, or that manipulate their genes in some way. There are two main issues that are specific to biotechnology, uh, to different fields of biotechnology. And they have to do with um, how we treat or whether, we're, whether we are experimenting or manipulating human beings. And then it, that comes to a question of, is that ethical? Uh, we have a set of ethics as a society um, in, in, how we, in how we deal with, with human beings. And uh, the big issue there is not whether human beings have rights and that we shouldn't be hurting human beings or experimenting on human beings without their permission. The big question there is, what is a human being? And that's where the dispute is. Is, is a single cell embryo a human being, in which case it deserves uh, protection, or is it just a single cell? So that, there's the dispute that occurs there. Um, certainly when the uh, embryo develops into a fetus, it becomes more complicated as the fetus develops into a, uh, into a baby. Now, uh, the second issue of biotechnology um, that, that's right to cause concern is um, are we manipulating um, food products, for example, or manipulating organisms that will then go and, and harm the environment in some way? And so, yes, I think that um, uh, there has to be a regulatory uh, process that is in place to make sure that um, the science supports the idea that the biotechnology that you're um, implementing is not going to be harmful, harmful to the environment, harmful to you and food. Um, so yes, of course, regulation has to be uh, considered there. I think it's very important um, not to use um, scary words that um, elicit fright in people um, for reasons that they may not understand. And um, the word eugenics, which, which means um, good genes or generating children with good genes, um, the word eugenics has a horrible, horrible uh, connotation because of how it was implemented in the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, in the United States, in other countries, uh, and then, of course, in, in uh, Nazi Germany. Um, and the way they imagined eugenics was they were going to tell some people to reproduce, and they, meaning the government, representing society, said, you can reproduce, you can't reproduce. You can come into America, you can't come into America, um, because your genes make you unfit. And uh, that kind of eugenics has two problems, two huge problems. First of all, it violates human rights uh, by telling some people that they can reproduce and others that they can't, and that's a violation of human rights. Um, and second, the so-called science it was based on was, was totally faulty. And um, so for both of those reasons, um, that eugenics has been totally discredited. And of course, it ended up in, with the Nazis killing off large groups of people. Um, now, what is happening now, I would say, is that no scientist believes in um, either of those aspects of eugenics. No, eugenic, no geneticist believes in that. What we're talking about um, now is not having the government tell people who can reproduce and who can't. The question is whether parents themselves 
should be allowed to choose what genes go into their own children. And um, there are a couple of reasons why that's so totally different. And, and one of the things is that um, there's no government that's intervening. The second thing is, is that parents, all normal parents, want to help their children, not hurt their children. There are a tiny number of ambiguous genetic changes that some people might want to do, but the vast majority of parents, if they could, um, want their children to, to prosper. And so any kind of genetic changes they could imagine, or I could imagine, uh, that they would want are ones that help their children prosper. I originally speculated that um, that rich people would have the um, uh, the money to to use this technology, and it's interesting because if a um, child is given a certain genetic constitution by the parent, the difference between genetics and environmental advantages is that the child could could then um, transmit that same gene to his or her children. Um, along with other enhancements. And so the idea was that you could get an evolutionary process, not by natural selection, but by the fact that in the beginning there were classes based on different um, economic means, and the class with uh, more money could, could uh, advance in this way. Um, I don't think, I, I, I have um, disavowed that belief for Western society now, uh, mainly because the technology has become so cheap um, that in, in Western society it's not going to be the top 10%, it'll, it'll be the whole country. Um, and in fact, it'll be, there will be genetic vaccinations, I suspect, someday, where uh, the government will offer to, to couples and say, we're going to do a genetic um, enhancement so that your child doesn't get cancer and that your child doesn't get these uh, genetic uh, influence diseases. So it could be something like that. I wouldn't want the government to tell people they had to do it, but it, it's, it is interesting that it would benefit society. So where's the split? And the split would only occur if you had two groups of people who, who never came into contact with each other. Because once you have contact, you have gene flow, and that destroys the split. Uh, that won't happen in West society. That won't happen in America, Europe, um, Japan, and now the upcoming China and Southeast Asia because there is what a geneticist would call gene flow. And the gene flow is so significant, it's going to stop that from, from happening. Um, I worry about the poorest countries in the world, and if they're not brought in as members of the uh, global family, there could be something. But it's pure speculation, and it was meant to get people to think, not to say that it was definitely going to happen.